welcome back to the Spirit of Watercolor with Linda. And I'm so glad you're here again. Uh, I told you in the last video that I did, and happy November, it's cold out there. I took a chilling walk with my husband recently. Um, and there are these beautiful, beautiful colors, right? Some of them, as we've talked in the past, are transparent, some are staining, some are more granulating. And we're going to do some mini videos that we break down the different kinds of granulating paints that there are out there. A uh, long time ago I started my little booklet here, it's just a Strathmore pad, where I was looking at you know some of them being more transparent. For some reason I wrote granulation up here. Some of the paints down here are granulating. I need to put up here the other characteristics, but um, because some of these are, tra are transparent and there's no granulation in them. And then there's the paints that have the granules in them. And the question is, what can we do with these, okay? Um, and what I'd like to talk about and demonstrate in a quick video, okay? We're not gonna go on and on. We're gonna do some, some rocks and some sky and some different things. We're gonna look at um, and break down the different um, granulating paints and what we can do with those, okay? Uh, I like to take this from just, not just swatching the color, we'll do that, but, you know, to take it further. So we wanna, in my videos, I like to take it to, let's see what we could do with it, because oftentimes I see people, and it's wonderful to see these gorgeous paints swatched and see what they do, what the paints do, what their characteristics are. But, then, you know, I'm often left with, well, I don't know what I should do with that, right? Um, I do have a book that I've used for inspiration before by Zoltan Zabel, and he does rocks. So I'm going to draw up some rocks, and we're going to talk about, firstly, in this video, the earth tones, the earth colors. Um, if you know what those are, they're the, um, let me just grab a few of these here. I've got um, the raw siennas and burnt sienna. Some of these have more granulation than others, which you'll see. Then um, the uh, raw umber, the earth colors that most people have in their palette. And you may have not all of these, but some of these, right? Um, and then another one that is more of a bluish, almost a bluish black, is the Payne's Gray paint. Uh, I use Daniel Smith paints, by the way. I, I just adore them because there's so many colors in this uh, repertoire of paints. And... Windsor Newton's fine. Many of these other paints, Sennelier I use, you'll find that they also carry these very same colors as well. Uh, sometimes they're called something a little bit different, um, and so you'll see uh, some differences in them, but uh, just in the name, but it's the same paints essentially. Such as Thalo Blue, I understand, is Windsor Blue. So Windsors are like Thalos, which are very staining paints. Um, and anyway, I wanted to also mention, beside the, the earth tones, which I want to look focus mostly on in this video, um, then we also have Payne's Gray, which is a very common dark as well, more of a blue-gray, like I mentioned. Very granulating, wonderful granulations in that. And then we're going to go from the earth tones mostly here to shifting. I may save the Payne's Gray um, because another video that I want to go into and maybe what we'll do is we'll take a sketch and we'll start with the earth tones and then maybe we'll start to bring in on the second video, here's a good idea, I just came up with it, and bring in some Payne's Gray, Lunar Black. Um, there's some extreme granulating colors that Daniel Smith uses, which we need to look at in a little more depth as to how they make them that way. But there's Lunar Earth, the lunar colors, Lunar Red Rock, Lunar Violet, I think there's a lunar blue. Some of these are more recently made, although the recent is relative. <laughs> uh, could have been years ago now, but I never got all of those because I also have found that I can take my lunar black or my neutral tint, which is another one that's similar to Payne's Gray, but it is more purple, not as blue as Payne's Gray, even though these are called darks or almost blacks or grays. Payne's Gray is obviously a dark, dark gray, but it's, it's very granular and that makes these unique. So some of those other colors I want to look at in another video. 
And if we're lucky and it works out, the, the painting that we're going to do here, we can start to bring in the other granule colors after we go into the umbers and the browns and so forth. The, uh, uh, I think there's a other brown. Well, we'll see which ones I have. And you can check and see if you have them or have something similar to them to play with in your palette. And then we can, like I say, create some rocks. And uh, we might bring in a little bit more. It might be a totally granulated <laughs> painting. I, it might be fun. I've done that with Primatex, where the whole thing was Primatex paints, which are another granule, but they're mineral-based, totally paints. Um, so you can check that video out too. But um, we're going to stick to the, the earth tones here. So stay tuned. Come to the paper with me. I'm very excited to get back to these. I don't use these as much as uh, you get away from things when you find new colors. I want to come back to and always... Um, how do I say, appreciate all the wonderful colors that are out there, some that are just staples that have been around, you know, forever and for a good reason. So we're going to explore those today. So please join me and uh, I'll see you there. I'm going to say at the beginning of this video to like and subscribe because sometimes I wait till the end and <clears throat> I don't know if everyone stays for my my exit video speech at the end of my painting, or my uh, demos. But I thank you for being here and I look forward to doing these mini videos with you. So they won't be lengthy, but we'll just get enough information on and then stop and then, you know, we'll go to the next one. And hopefully we'll have a lot of these moving from sedimentary on to who knows what's next, right? Let's find out together. Okay, see you at the table. So I have looked at drawings here for examples. I ended up really liking this one by Zabo, where I see rocks in, there's some water and some, there's not sky, but I'm going to put sky in mine. So if you look at this, it's just a nice um, array of rocks that we're looking at and water and sky. And it's just a beautiful little um, uh, painting. And actually, I don't know what size it is, but I'm going to take that, and I've drawn my own similarly but different. I'm hoping you can see this. Um, let's get it in, out of the shadows here. And get a little more light on that. Okay, so I'm hoping my heater will go off soon because it just went on when I thought it was so quiet here this evening. So I put my earth colors that I'm going to use here. There's some other colors here that just I didn't want to take them off my palette. I cleaned up the palette, but I didn't take off those because you don't want to throw that much paint away, right? But here I have my raw sienna, which is kind of like a yellow ochre, maybe a little bit richer. I've got Italian burnt sienna and burnt sienna here because, oh no, I'm sorry, burnt sienna and Italian sienna, um, which are similar. I think Italian sienna will have a little more granulation. This one isn't as granulated. Um, and we're going to use those in our rocks. And then we have uh, sepia, which is a darker brown, again, granulating. And then we have these granulating colors, which are um, your uh, ultramarine blue and Prussian blue. There, it's a deeper, more purpley blue. And so what I'm going to do is, now we looked at this picture. And I kind of made my composition, if you recall, from that uh, waterscape. However, after flipping through the book a little more, I really liked how, like in particular, say a snowy scene. Now it's, it's been snowing out and it's November. It's kind of a little early, but I'm now shifting my, my seasonal gears, <laughs> if you will, to maybe doing some cards. I did order some cards and we're going to start to do some things with these beautiful pine trees in soon right for the holidays and that kind of thing but the, here's a couple simple rocks just with the browns and you mix in a little of your blues okay and we'll get some very beautiful rocks if and we'll use a tissue okay so get yourself a tissue so that when you want to just paint on some of these you know washes of color and then bring in the shadow down in here of the um, you mix your ultramarine or whatever blue with your browns and then you bring in the shadow colors here which become a dark you know mixing those two colors um, and then if you want a little highlight on these you can just take your tissue 
and just kind of gently lift. Okay, so we're just going to experiment like that. I want to show you one more picture here. This is again Zoltan Zabo's wonderful book about trees, mountains, and rocks. Here there's a lot more rocks, okay? Um, so this kind of opens up the door for us to just experiment with our own made shapes. I made my own shapes on this pad, if you recall, and I will just come in and do those. And I'll decide later if that's going to be water, which seemed a little daunting, or maybe we're going to put in some snow, which means we can leave a lot of white, makes it a little simpler. And as you remember, I put in a little bit of sky for fun. Uh, bits of that one old paint. These are old tubes of paint that I opened up, by the way. So um, I'm going to start in, and we're going to um, start to just experiment and practice some rocks. And I'm hoping this will not be a long video. As you recall, I said I'm going to try to do these shorter. This is always a challenge, and maybe it's just not really meant to be in the way that I I show you how to do things and teach, because sometimes these things do take some time. And getting some of my favorite pointed rounds out and I want a rounded round which is is another um, oh sorry that's a flat well we could do the flat too I, I use multiple brushes because then I have a lot more options this is going to create its own point this is a uh, a sable round I don't think any of these were super expensive rounds, okay? So I'm just going to start to come in here. I'm going to start with, say, my raw sienna. We can kind of see how that looks now, right? And we're going to start in with some of our rocks in the foreground. And um, let me just move things around a little bit so that hopefully I won't have my, my head in there. Sometimes that happens. And that can be a bother to you, I'm sure. And uh, we come in and we say, okay, here's my rocks, right? All right. And we'll start to bring some of these in. And I'm going to do these sort of as soft, wet on dry. You can wet, completely wet these as well. Um, but what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find the water here. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Um, and just kind of start to come into some of these. And like I said, you know, you can experiment all over where you want your rocks in here. My rocks are going to be mm, semi, um, semi, uh, you're going to see some transparencies coming when you're in the soft wash of it. And then as you kind of move into your, you know, granulations, you start to see there too. Okay, now... Here, let me put a little more over in this one over here. Okay. And, of course, rocks have these little granules and nodules in them, so we do want that here and there and there, okay? So I'm varying the value of this, just this raw sienna so far. I could do a whole lot of rocks just in that, you know, kind of color scheme, okay? Um, and so, again, I'm just kind of seeing how I want these shapes to go. Isn't this beautiful already? I'm just using this one round brush. Maybe that's all I'll need. Okay, I'm going to pull in some, yeah, I think it's on the video too, some of my, I'm trying to bring this together for you a little bit here, my ultramarine and my burnt sienna, which is the first one, if you remember. And I'm going to make a very interesting, rich, dark, you almost pull toward a black when you do this if you haven't tried this before. A lot of people already know this. Um, so if you're in a more advanced painting mode, okay, and then we're going to start to bring that in. Now, see, it's going wet on, into wet, right, because here is uh, this. Um, and, of course, you can move your, your paper around and create some shapes here, okay. I want a little behind the other rock. There's a rock behind a rock here. I'm not even using my, well, I could use my pointed round there because I always feel like I have a little more control. Or your flat. You could use your flat as well. Bring that in as well. Like, uh, oops. I have one empty um, water tub because I keep going for it. But um, sometimes you can get a lot more information on more quickly with your flat brushes too. And then um, I'll go back in with the sienna kind of come in over here against this rock here and let that be a shadow behind the other rock there 
and one little shadow on this rock here. Okay. And, you know, we're just starting to create some beautiful rocks here in the, in the painting. And now that I know where the water is. Okay. And um, also, again, with the tissue, I think my tissue did, took off. <laughs> Find my tissue, the tissue. There we go. And then um, we can, you know, start to bring in a little bit of white where we want it in these rocks. Okay. And again, I don't want this to get too, you know, complicated or anything like that. And while these are wet, you can, you know, kind of create some light on those if you wish. Um, I'm going to stick with my. one and we're gonna just you know create rocks wherever I'm gonna get a, a little bit of the sepia in here now and just kind of start to create a little more the rocks do vary in color so you know we can enjoy that and start to I'm actually holding this because I find that um, the it keeps my head out and I get this pretty close to the camera and you can kind of see some things happening here now okay um, and I just kind of want to bring these rocks into the rest of the painting here you know now as well and so you know, we're going to have land and we're going to have maybe some snow. And of course, I know now that I can kind of bring shadows in around with the blue. And I can glaze those in, or how do I say, um, make the variegated washes by just kind of bringing the color in. And you'll see them kind of blend on the paper sometimes as well. And uh, I'm going to put some more rocks up there. And... We're going to um, maybe bring this in. I, I like that raw sienna. I haven't used that in years. Just kind of bring some land into some of this here. Okay. And you see how I just do some quick brush just to kind of bring them into the, the painting. Okay. And that, again, flat brush I always am always so comfortable with. I wish everyone would find how wonderful these flat brushes can be. And I'm, I'm just working a lot with these earth colors and the blues right now, and that's it. And so if you have some of those earth colors and some beautiful blues, and my rocks are a little more, um, I want to say, in the solid here, I can kind of bring in some more color to them to make them even more solid seeming as I go here. Yeah. And I can always lift with my tissue and add and take away um, color from them. One thing, I, I have been watching some other people, and I have noticed that you do have to be careful you don't get the blooms. If you keep going back into something, the colors won't just me meld together like this. They'll, they'll actually start to um, create blooms, which actually, in some cases with the rocks, it might actually work. Okay? But in some cases, it may actually not. The reason I do like the flat, this is a half-inch flat, and I, I sometimes really like my big large one but for these paintings there this is not a large painting so I don't really necessarily want to do that okay so I'm gonna but I get a nice sharp lines and edges with these okay and so I can kind of bring in some rocks that are like that more you know squared shaped and so on okay and I can still come in with those um, get the pointed brush again I think that's the pointed one and bring in the, again, I'm going to try a little of this Prussian now with the sepia. It's going to be a really super dark dark. Can you see, uh, see that? I'm mixing those. Sepia and Prussian.
And then, you know, we could kind of put it in somewhere else in the painting, right? And the values could shift and change depending on where the light is, you know. In fact, if the light is coming from one direction, you know, you'll probably see that you'll see the, the whites on the tops of the rocks all on the same direction, okay? Say like this and lifting out some of the light here and then um, letting it get to the dark on the left side is what I've been doing over here. Actually, the sun's probably coming from the middle and over here you've got the shadows here and on this side we might have the shadows over here because the sun is somewhere directly above coming down on this, okay? All right, so we're not going to do a whole lot more here because this is this is the video. I don't want it to get too long. I, I tend to get going so long. I'm trying to get some blue on this side. Um, oh, what is going on with the oh? This color is it is. Um, gosh, the sepia is almost a blue black brown. It's an interesting dark. I didn't see. I haven't pulled these colors out in so long. It's really exciting to pull these colors out after all this time and see what they actually look like. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna uh, probably come back in and show you the final, you know, after I get, you know, get a little more into this and we'll, we'll come back on and look. But, you know, the rocks are kind of hiding in the snow. I really like that idea better than the water because I wasn't really thinking about doing water. I was thinking of just studying rocks, so we'll just kind of keep it simple. All right. I thought I would just kind of start to work in my sky, so I did wet with just clear water. And I'm just going to put in some uh, mixture of the burnt sienna with the um, ultramarine blue. And because, again, I, these are those granulating colors, I thought I'd make the painting all with granulation. <laughs> Pretty much all granulation. Um, and this is just going to... You know, just be some clouds, or maybe a lot of clouds, <laughs> I mean, and um, I, I make my skies really simple and loose, and, and they tend to be more beautiful and, what do I say, the word is more, um, to me, natural looking like the sky is. Let's just take a quick look at where we're at thus far. Um, I've been adding some more blue into the rocks as they dry and some shadows with the blues and the browns. Um, got a little bit of a green rock over here that could be unframed, you know, matted over or I can... Oops, my camera's dropping. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really like where it's going and I hope that you do too. We can decide, I, like I said, the sky is, you know, having to dry. And we will just um, kind of call this for this video finished, and we'll we'll move on to um, the next, which is the more even more granulating paints than these. These are our earth colors that are granulating, and then there's going to be the super granulating ones like lunar black, lunar earth, lunar red rock. Those are really wonderful. And then there's you know the Payne's gray and uh, certain colors which have a lot more granulation than these ones that we've used today over here. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.